They're saying the diagram below shows the part of the brain. Oh, yes, you can see it. That's the part of the brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are they asking? They are saying that identify part A. What is this part A? You can identify all of the parts. For example, uh, part A is um, cerebellum. Cerebellum. Part uh, B is medulla oblongata. Part C is uh, putary gland or hypophysis. Part A is uh, hypothalamus. Sorry, this is hypothalamus. And part D is uh, cerebrum. Now, state two function of part D, which is cerebrum. It has three functions. The first function is, is the center for higher thought processes, which is memory, judgment, and reasoning. Number two, it coordinates all voluntary actions. For example, raising the hand, sitting, standing, things you do on your own will. And then lastly, it receives and interprets all the sensations, all the sensations. For example, seeing, uh, hearing, tasting, all that. Those are sensations. So all that, those are the functions of cerebrum. Name the hormone that's stimulated by gland C that has an effect on number one, long bones. That is growth hormone. It is growth hormone which has the the effect on um, long bones. It brings about the growth of these bones. And then now they are saying that mammary glands. That is prolactin. Prolactin. If you look at a hormone called prolactin, pro. Lactin, you know the word lactogen from ShopRite. This that is milk. So lactin is milk. So uh, lactose is milk sugar. So anything related to lact, it means that that is uh, milk. You must think about milk. So the answer is prolactin. And then they're saying that state one way in which the brain is protected is protected in three ways by the three layers, which we call the meninges, uh, the cerebrospinal fluid, and then also by the cranium, the, the, the cranium. So it is the cranium, not the whole skull, the cranium, because the skull, when you talk about the skull, it includes also the jaws. So you better use the word cranium. Remember when you're talking about the brain size, uh, how is the brain size? And the cranium, we said that don't talk about skull, talk about cranium. Then they're saying that describe the role of um uh, uh describe the role of hypothalamus uh in regulating. How is hypothalamus able to regulate um thermal regulation? Remember that uh it how does it control thermal regulation? What is thermal regulation before you know the function of hypothalamus uh, in this regard? Thermal regulation is when the temperature is being kept constant okay, under a narrow uh, range. So how is the hypothalamus able to do this? So when you talk about hypothalamus, hypothalamus might, must work together with the skin. How? Now, this hypothalamus, it will receive and interpret. It will receive, and once it receives, it will interpret the impulse being received. And then, uh, where is this impulse coming from? From the receptor. Where the receptor, it could be the skin or in the blood vessels, depending on the where the temperature is, but mostly uh, on the skin. So it receives and then interprets that uh, 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 yeah, impulse, uh, obtained from the receptor, which is the skin, and then it sends the impulse to the blood vessel. So when the blood vessels, um, when it sends the impulse to the blood vessel, this, it will depend on whether uh, the blood vessel will constrict or it will dilate. Yeah? Because they said thermal regulation. They didn't say that in cold conditions or in hot conditions. So when it, it sends the impulse to the blood vessel, the blood vessels will either constrict or will dilate. And then it will not stop there. Yes. It will also uh, influence how much blood 
is flowing under the skin. So if it, it is dilated, it means more blood. If it has constricted, it means that uh, less blood will, cons uh, will what? Will flow under the skin. It does not stop there. Remember, thermal regulation involves the skin and the sweat gland. So now it will also influence the sweat gland, either by the sweat gland producing more sweat or by the sweat gland producing less sweat. So it will influence the blood vessel, the blood which flows on the skin or in the skin or under the skin. And then also it will also influence how the sweat gland will work. So basically you can say that it receives and interprets impulse from the receptor that is the skin. And also now it sends the impulse uh, to the blood vessels either to uh, of the skin, either to constrict or to dilate. You understand and also influences um, the sweat gland either to be more active or it becomes less active basically that's what you need to know because they didn't ask you whether it is uh, cold conditions or in under 40 conditions part b is involved in homeostatic control of the carbon dioxide concentration yes State the location of the receptor that is stimulated by the increase in the carbon dioxide concentration in the blood. Where is part B? Let's first see what is part, 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 part B. Part B is the medulla oblongata. So what is the receptor? Where is the receptor? The receptor are found in the, in the, in the blood vessels, which we call carotid artery carotid artery carotid artery these are blood vessels um carotid yes carotid arteries these are arteries arteries where they found you are found at the upper part of the of the human basically the neck the chest the neck yeah moving from the, the end of the neck to the chest to the part of the the head that's the lower part of the head yeah, we call them carotid artery. So that's where the receptors are found. And then uh, B, they are saying that name the two effectors that part B sends impulse to. Where is part B now? Part B or uh, receptors. If you look at it, there are two things which uh, it sends impulse. It sends impulse to the heart so that the heart can either increase or decrease. Uh, basically, the heartbeat increases so that it uh, sends blood to the muscles and then picks up carbon dioxide. Number two, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Diaphragm is also another tick and intercostal muscles so that the breathing rate can increase and the depth can also increase so that carbon dioxide is pumped out of the body. Carbon dioxide, we don't need it in the body. That's why it's supposed to be pumped out. We don't have the other way of the negative feedback mechanism for it.